Greetings Internet, this is Dustin with My Home Kit Home and today we'll be looking at HomePass. This app allows you to store all of your HomeKit codes in one single secure place. I'm actually pretty interested in this app because I don't currently have a solution for this. So I'm kind of a rebel without a cause in those terms. If you find this video useful, please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know whenever we launch a new video. And you can also check us out at myhomekithome.com for our blog post and a little bit more in-depth review about this particular application. So without further ado, let's jump into the app. Right, and as soon as we jump into the app, we see Touch ID. Since I've already previously gone into the app and kind of checked it out before recording this, I went ahead and set up Touch ID just to be a little bit more secure. So we'll go ahead and work that magic. You can see here that the interface is stunningly simple. We have our settings on the top left, we have our main pane to see our accessories, and then we have our add accessory button at the top right. Here we can, we can have our option to turn on or turn off Touch ID. We have our sync button to sync it with our home data. We have our theme submenu. This is an interesting thing. We can have a light and a dark theme. Let's, there we go, there's the dark theme. We also have the ability to change to the dark theme or light theme either manually. We can also do it based on time of day. This needs your location data in order to do so because it needs to know where you are to know if the sun is up or the sun is down. I'm not particularly interested in that, so I'm not going to allow that. We can also have it based on the brightness of your phone, so ambient light that's around you. And we can adjust the sensitivity of this by just sliding left or right on the little slider there. We'll back out of this. I'm not a huge fan of dark mode, so I'm going to go ahead and change it back to the light mode. All right, so going back to the main menu here, we can see that we have our advanced settings. In the advanced settings, we can actually export to a CSV file if we'd like to have this in a spreadsheet for further information. We can also reset all of our information that we have there. Um, also there at the bottom, we can see that we can get support directly from the developer. We can also rate the app, which I'll be doing shortly. And then we also have a link to the developer's other app, which is an interesting HomeKit camera app that allows you to see multiple feeds and one single screen. We'll be looking at that at a later point in time. Let's go ahead and look at the Add Accessory button. So we can add an existing accessory or a new one. Let's go ahead and add an existing accessory here. We'll see how that goes. You can see here that we have a few different accessories that are already on the network. Let's go down there at the bottom. We'll add this iHome Smart Plug since I've been working with that recently. We can see that we have the name of the plug. We can see which room it's in. We can also put in the HomeKit code. Now, something I don't really like about this app is we don't have the ability to just scan the code like we would normally with HomeKit interactions. Um, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it's not too much of a headache to just type in eight digits. Not a big deal. We can also see our category and then we can also add notes. So this actually is a coffee maker. So I just go ahead and type in coffee maker there and we're good to go. Um, in case you weren't too aware of it, that HomeKit code is not actually the real HomeKit code. So don't try anything silly. Uh, not that you would really be able to, but I'll go ahead and change it back over here. There, there's the real HomeKit code there. Yeah, you have it. So if you can find me, jump onto my network, you can potentially gain control of my devices. There you go. <laughs> uh, not too concerned about it. And then there we go. So we have the... You know, it's, it's in our accessories and we can go in and we can look at our HomeKit code if, in case we need it. If something ever goes wrong, we need to reset the device, re-add it to our home, or if we, um, if we just lose the code and we need it at some point in the future, we can also edit. If we go in there into the edit mode and we have the same options that we did when we first set up the device. And that's basically it. It's a super 
basic app, but it's really useful for those times when maybe you just don't like paper. I'm not a huge fan of paper and pen, so I think it's great. Um, yeah, if you like this video, if you'd like to see more content like this, let us know in the comments below. You can also like, share, and subscribe as always. You can also check us out at myhomekithome.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram too. Yeah, until next time, folks, this is Dustin with My Home Kit Home.